How do you capture the essence of motion using a simple medium like watercolor? In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I painted the wings on this hummingbird using the wet and wet technique to try and show the beating and flitting motion of those delicate wings. If you want to try this technique and are striving for similar results, the most important element is going to be your paper. So using cotton paper is going to be important because the fibers in the paper can expand and shrink and take more layers than perhaps the cheaper wood pulp based paper. I'm using a silver black velvet size 8 round brush and I've already lightly sketched on the hummingbird but you'll notice I did not draw any kind of outline around the wings. This is because I don't want an ugly dark pencil mark to be showing beneath the light layers of paint. The wings need to look foggy and almost imperceptibly blending out into the background. To achieve this effect, we're going to use the wet and wet technique. I start by wetting the brush in clean water and painting the area where the wings will be with the water, extending the water even beyond where I know the wings edges are. The only edge I'm being careful to avoid is right along the top of the bird's body. You can see from the glare on the paper that I've painted almost this balloon shape above the hummingbird just with water. The paper is glistening but not pooling anywhere, so it's ready for paint. This dark blue on my palette is Daniel Smith Indigo. I'm mixing a little bit of water into my indigo so that I have a nice light value. I draw a straight line with the paint on the wet paper, marking the top line of that first wing. I dab the brush in water, careful not to remove any paint, and then swipe the belly side of my brush along that line, creating a wider mark. Using broad brush strokes, I pull the color that's left on my brush down and fill in the entire shape of that wing. I use the tip of my brush to create the point of the second wing and fill that in with my light indigo as well. I rinse slightly again and swipe the belly of my brush along the top side of the front wing. I rinse one more time and swipe along that new edge. With each swipe of the brush here, my goal is to continue to lighten those values so that the wing's edges just seem to disappear into the background. Next, I mix up a light combination of indigo and this reddish brown that's on my palette, which is Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna, and that's creating a really nice light brown. I paint another straight line with this color to reiterate the wing shape, and then paint some lines coming towards the wings, suggesting those separate feathers. I mix up a darker combo of my indigo and burnt sienna and paint the darker values on the back wing, painting right up to that front wing. Now because the paper is still wet, everything is softening naturally, it's creating those beautiful soft velvety edges. Be careful not to paint these brown and blue colors into the hummingbird's back since we want to use a different, much more vibrant color for that area and you don't want to muddy it up. I rinse and dry my brush and then dip it in this manganese blue hue, mixing in a little water just to lighten the value, and very lightly I paint some skinny little blue marks again showing the separate feathers. My brush strokes are as light and as delicate as the subject matter I'm painting. Be careful not to press your brush down too hard for any of these little details or you risk scrubbing out your first layer of paint. I add a blue line to the top of that wing, rinse slightly, dry any excess water, and then soften again along that edge by gently swiping. I dip my brush in water again and swipe my brush all along the area I just painted. I rinse again and then use a scrubbing motion to extend that blurred effect even higher onto the paper above the wing, softening, pushing, and pulling wherever I see any uneven tones. I take a tiny bit of indigo and add another dab of dark paint into the wet burnt sienna, allowing some wet and wet blending of the two colors to occur. This is another way you can actually blend is just by applying one layer of paint and adding some more right into it, wet and wet. I darken some of those feathers, still being very careful to use a light and feathery touch. On the top of the wing, as it is approaching the body, there's naturally going to be a little less motion in that part of the wing, so there's also going to be a little bit more detail that is perceptible. So here I add some tiny vertical brush strokes, just hinting at some of those feather details. Now I need to let the wings dry before going back in with another layer, so while that area dries, I paint the hummingbird's body. Before we go on, I wanted to let you guys know that this hummingbird tutorial is available in real time. 
Just head over to emilyolsonart.com where you can access more than 60 full-length narrated tutorials for just a small amount per month. All the tutorials include a sketch and a reference photo, as well as a list of supplies so that you can just jump in and paint right along with me. The membership also includes my watercolor jumpstart video course, which is the perfect place to start if you're a beginner. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can see all the tutorials that are currently available. And I do add more every month. All right, let's get back to the video. Painting the body in crisp detail is something that really helps those wings look even blurrier because the body is standing still and those wings are in rapid motion. The wings still need a bit of work, so the next step is to take a smaller brush. This is my silver black velvet size two round brush, and I'm taking a watery mixture of indigo and burnt sienna and just adding a dark wash over the back wing. Then I switch back to my larger brush and soften all of the edges around that wash. With a little bit of watery paint that remains on my brush from softening that fresh paint, I scrub the remaining paint all around the edge of that back wing, creating a darker, more defined, but still very soft edge. Then I rinse it again and scrub with my clean, damp brush around that edge. It is kind of a lot of work, you guys, but I think it's worth it. If you see how many steps it takes to soften and scrub, it might be a little bit discouraging, but don't give up. Finish it to the end. So to finish up that front wing, I take some more watered down indigo and paint a more defined shape along the top wing close to the body, just adding quick little vertical brush strokes to emphasize the blurred motion of those feathers. I remove a little of the paint on my paper towel and then soften those marks. And then I add another layer of very watered down indigo above the entire wing Again, softening, and while this is still damp, I go in with a more decisive, straight brush stroke. This is to suggest that bone that's strengthening all of this motion. I use that same color and value to paint in some more details and what's, I guess this is the armpit of the bird's wing, just adding some more light gray feather markings. I apply a light layer of indigo using the belly side of the brush to slightly darken at the base of the wing. While the second layer is drying, I work more on the hummingbird's head and body. You need to wait until an area is completely dry before adding details like very fine lines. So once I'm confident that the wings are dry, I go in with my tiny brush and paint darker, very delicate feather details, trying to make them lighter and more washed out as I move up the wing. Finally, I finish the rest of the bird and there is the completed painting. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Leave me a like and a comment and be sure to check out this other video on capturing motion on watercolor. See you there.